Howdy gang and welcome back to Pool School. In today's episode, I am gonna show you how to care for your salt pool during the off season. So what do you say we jump right in? Alrighty, before we get started, I wanna thank you once again for watching this video. Remind you to like it if you do. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And please share my channel with everyone you know who owns a pool. Okay. So I have had a couple emails from some subscribers asking me to do a video on how to care for their salt pool in the off season. So that what, that's what this video is about. And it's not very difficult. There's not a whole lot much more than that you need to do or less that you need to do for your pool as opposed to during the regular season. So I'm gonna start with a list of things that you still need to be doing with your pool during the off season, salt cell or not. And then we'll talk about what happens with your salt system during the off season, all right? All right, so here are the things that you should still be doing to your salt pool during the off season. First, you still need to maintain running your pump and equipment, okay? Now, you don't have to run it quite as long, and I did a video, it's a very short video, on filter run times. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description below this video so that you can watch it, and I'd highly recommend you watch it. I talk about the different filter run times for a single and variable speed filter during the peak and off season, so please watch that. But you still need to run your pool equipment during the off season, only you don't have to run it quite so long. All right, so that's the first thing. The next thing is you still have to maintain a clean filter. So if you have a sand filter, you still have to backwash it. Not as frequently, but you still have to backwash it. DE same thing a cartridge filter i always recommend that during the off season sometime during the off season you take the opportunity at that time to pull your cartridge filter apart and clean the cartridges that way when the swim season kicks back in and everything starts hitting you've got clean cartridges and you make it through the swim season and everybody's happy and you don't end up with some kind of green pool or some catastrophic event that makes a mess of your pool right before some kind of pool party that you have and messes up your swim season all right so that's the second thing the third thing is you still need to test and maintain your pool chemistry now stay with me on this one this is the big difference. All right. You still need to maintain your chlorine levels, your pH, your alkalinity, and um, your, your phosphate levels and keep those low. Okay. Those are really critical. No matter what the season is, you still need to maintain those things. So keep your phosphates down, especially during the fall, because you're going to get a lot of vegetation falling in the pool usually, and that's going to release phosphates. If you've not seen my video on algae and algicides and why you don't need them, I'll put a link to the in the description below this video so you can watch that video. It's probably one of my most important videos I could ever do. Please watch that, and it'll tell you why phosphates are so critically not good for your pool. All right? but you still need to maintain your pool chemistry. Now that's where the trick comes in for those of you who have a salt system. So listen very carefully, all right? When the pool water temperature drops to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 15.6 degrees Celsius, all right? Your salt generator stops producing chlorine or sanitizer. I don't know why and how that works, but it does, all right? So what that means is you're going to have to supplement your pool's chlorine with a regular chlorine. My suggestion, get a five pound bucket of chlorine tablets and a chlorine tablet floater. Pop one tablet in there with the vents open on the chlorine tablet floater and just float around your pool and that should help but if you are checking your chemistry on a weekly basis remember all these things you're still doing on a weekly basis as far as checking stuff you'll be able to know how much chlorine you need in there you don't need to maintain a ton of chlorine just enough to keep it at the low end of the ideal range all right but you are going to have to supplement your chlorine once your pool temperature gets to 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees, 15.6 degrees Celsius or below because your salt generator is not going to work anymore. All right. All right. And, and the other thing, because of that, you're going to want to shut off your salt cell. For some reason, when the salt, when, when the, the temperature drops like that, the salt generator can tend to actually overwork itself and that can shorten the life of your salt cell. So once your pool temperature hits 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15.6 degrees Celsius, turn your salt generator off, all right? 
more on that in a moment okay so you still have to maintain your chemistry on a regular basis the next thing you still got to brush and net out debris on your pool on a weekly basis believe it or not people always ask me in the in the off season oh so you're probably not very busy in the off season actually no it takes me less time to do pools in the off season but i have the same amount of clients because they understand the importance of maintaining your pool on a weekly basis so that you don't fall behind the eight ball and end up with a mess and that's usually where things get yucky okay so um you still gotta brush and net out your pool on a weekly basis if not maybe you could skip one week and brush your pool down every other week, but you're still gonna wanna net out any excess debris, all right? Next thing, you're also gonna need to keep emptying your skimmer and pump baskets, all right? Because they're still gonna get stuff in them as your system's running. So you wanna maintain those and empty those on a weekly basis, that way you're still getting adequate and proper water flow, okay? And that's pretty much it when it comes to your pool. So like I said, you pretty much maintain your pool the same way you do on a weekly basis as you would during the peak season. The only difference for those of you who have salt systems is you're going to have to supplement your chlorine with some regular chlorine. All right. And again, I prefer the tablets because they're simpler and you're not having to mess with it and do it too often. Okay. Liquid chlorine is more pure. Granular chlorine is a little easier too, as far as if you don't want a tablet, but you have to do it a little more often. So I'm trying to make it convenient for you. All right. Now, again, with the salt system, remember I said there's more on coming when it comes to the salt cell being shut off. Here's the deal. The salt system, the salt generator starts, stops working. All right. My suggestion is shut the system off once the pool temperature gets to that temperature and don't turn it back on until things start warming up again, okay? Because you're going to save wear and tear on your salt cell and you're not going to over, it, your salt cell is not going to overwork itself, which I've heard happens when it's cold like that, okay? But <clears throat> here's something that you want to do. Once your temperatures get to that place and you shut the, the system off, clean your salt cell. If you've not seen my video on cleaning a salt cell, please watch it. I'll put a link to that video in the description below this video as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can watch it, but please watch it. And you're going to want to clean that salt cell thoroughly before you shut the system off once your temperature of your pool gets to that, right? Once you've done that, the accumulation of minerals on the fins of your cell is going to be very, very minuscule. However, I would still suggest checking the cell every two months just to make sure that you don't see any visible minerals deposited on it. If you do, I'd suggest cleaning that cell again. It's just nice to maintain it, keeps the life of your cell at its peak, all right? But that is really the biggest thing that you need to do and the biggest difference between having a salt pool and not a salt pool, okay? Everything else you maintain the same way. It's just a lot easier. Hey, real quick, I wanted to just show you, this is the Hayward Aquarite salt chlorine generator. And this is one of my clients' pools. And you notice right here, I'm just gonna show you how to turn it off. Again, once your pool water temperature hits 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15.6 degrees Celsius, you can just come right over here to the switch right here and just switch it to off. Okay, it's a little bit warm still, so this cell is still working, so I'm gonna leave it at auto, okay? But that's pretty much how you do it. Remember, when I say shutting off the salt system, that doesn't mean shut off your pool equipment. Your pool equipment, again, like I said earlier, still needs to run, all right? So remember what I said about supplementing your, your salt pool with chlorine when your temperature drops and the cell doesn't work anymore or doesn't produce sanitizer or chlorine. This pool actually is really fortunate because they did a conversion. So this originally had a deck chlor, and this is a deck chlor. If you haven't seen my video on that, you don't really need to, but this is a deck chlor, and you notice the water swirling there. So this was the original way to chlorinate the pool. They'd put the tablets in there, and then when the filter pump run, it would erode the, the tablet, and you'd see that little pipe there. Water would then flow out into the pool and it would be concentrated with chlorine. So in this particular case, to supplement this pool, it's really easy for me. All I gotta do is drop a tablet in there and maybe I would do one tablet a month for this pool during the winter months and that is totally sufficient to keep, to keep the chlorine levels at an ideal level so that 
we don't have any major issues. Anyway, just wanted to show you that. So I hope that makes sense. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below this video, or you can always email me, and my email address is going to come across the bottom of the screen. It is kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Once again, Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. I want to thank you again for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, remember to have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids around water. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.